Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Independent City Council meeting. It's Tuesday, July 25th. It's 6.30 in the evening. I won't mess up like I did last time. And to let the record show that the uh, counselors are all here. Mm -hmm. And in front of you, counselors, you have the minutes of our July 11th meeting. And do they meet with your approval? Somebody, is that a, a, a yes? yes? Is that a motion? Yes. Yes, okay, I signify it. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed, well, she carries very much. Now, counselors, what I'm gonna to do tonight is, uh, if, with your indulgence, I'm gonna do a little mixing of some staff reports and visitor comments so that we can help, uh, uh, because I think that'll help move some things along and, and provide some clarity and information. So I'm gonna move back and forth. We'll still cover everything, but I wanna I want to do that. And so when we start that today, I'm gonna to ask uh, Chief Mason, I think, uh, because we've had some questions and there's some been some emails floating around related uh, to marijuana. And at the last council meeting, uh, City Manager Klein let us know that there were, that staff had informed him there were some, uh, some concerns about trying to move through some of the process. Could you give us an update on where that is? And um, Council, is it okay if he, just, if he sits from there? Is that all right? Chief, go ahead and speak from there. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Can you hear me all right? Yes, sir. So the reason that we got together to begin with and discussed uh, where we were with the uh, newly adopted rules regarding marijuana was because we had businesses in town that were already operating when the rules were passed. And we kind of had to decide how long of a grace period we were going to have to get those people into compliance. So the first step was that uh, Karen Johnson contacted those businesses and informed them that there was indeed a new ordinance that they needed to come into compliance with. And according to her, many of them have contacted her and made attempts to fulfill the obligations that are in, in the ordinance, but they're having a difficult time with certain sections of it. Um, there is uh, there is wording in it that requires things that are difficult for the existing businesses to comply with. So at this point, we've held off on any enforcement because we want to try to figure out what those roadblocks are and then bring that back to you and explain those roadblocks and see if there's some way that we can get it to where they're able to comply with the, uh, the legislation and also that we're able to get the information that you wanted us to have. I know, for example, one of the biggest ones was the... Uh, uh, background checks that we requested of all of the uh, both owners and workers, employees, principals, anyone that had anything to do with the business, those are required of those businesses that they get those um, from the state and from a federal um, clearing as well. And those have to be all within 30 days of completion. So you'd have to get all the information from your employees and get them all fingerprinted and submitted within 30 days of when you're going to submit your request to the city. Um, th that's a big job, and so you have to figure out how you're going to get that timing figured out um, so that you have it all before you turn it in, because if 30 days passes, according to our ordinance, it's no longer considered current. Mm -hmm. And so that's one that I don't know that we saw coming, I guess. Uh, it looked really good on paper, but when you start to actually go into the practice of it, it's things like that that they're having a, a difficult time with. Um, we also weren't really sure what the advantages of having all of those backgrounds were because there's no guidance in what we can do with that information as far as um, perhaps telling someone no, you can't have the business or this employee isn't appropriate. There's no regulatory guidelines that were established along with the requirement. And so I think we still need to look at that a little bit. So city manager and Karen and myself sat down and went through some of the concerns that she had received from the businesses. And I think our next step was to ask the businesses to come in and explain some of those concerns with you. Um, I'm not certain when that's going to be, but um, we're kind of, uh, it was like a very first meeting that got reported and that's where it went from here. Currently the businesses that are in our town are operating legally for the state, but they haven't been able to get that uh, certification from the city yet. And so that's, that's why we're trying to get it figured out because it's the current ones that are trying to come in compliance that haven't been able to. And Ms. Johnson, I wanted to, you had shared with me that trying to work with the state regulatory folks is difficult to even get some of the food. Would you share a little bit of that, please? Yes, I called the state to find out if I could even just get a copy of their a blank application form. So maybe it might be easier if we were using a very similar form. 
and I had to submit a public records request, and um, I'm still so happy to see the document that, and some of that still can be made in the back, and the judge can be looking at it later on, how much to give me. Okay. Counselors, do you have questions for the, the staff uh, at this point? As I understand, too, that there's no proposals that you're, you're just in the information gathering place. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. We're at a place where we're trying to figure out what a reasonable timeline is for these businesses to come in compliance. But then we're now seeing that we may need to extend that to be reasonable because of the uh, difficulties with some of the requirements that we put in place. Councilors, do you have questions for staff? Yes. Councilor would, Morgan. Would you say that, that the uh, stumbling block that you just described to us is one of the largest ones and sort of characterizes the problems that are coming up? I really can't answer that very well. Um, Ms. Johnson? She yeah. actually has had contact with all the businesses and heard from them firsthand what their concerns were. Yeah, the... the, the, the background checks but it's certainly one of the other that things. was the, one of the main things okay um, the reason i had so much trepidation about this was because the way it was presented before it sounded to me like we were going to try to dumb down the the uh, ordinance and i didn't want to see that happen are there additional questions well i guess i have an opinion there i look at any kind of anything like this as being able to be divided into must have things should have things and nice to have things. And I think I look at those questions the same way. And if there's a must have, then you don't have a choice. You shouldn't dumb it down. If there's a nice to have, sure, let's, maybe we don't need it for six months. But I think that's a good way of looking at it anyway. I don't think every question has even power. Um, but the fact that if, if, the, if, if the state gets Somehow there's, there's, there's the background checks, the state's up doing it, and then we do it also? Or are we just relying on the state? <clears throat> We're requiring them to get their own. So get our local own. businesses and their employees would all have to submit to the state and also to the FBI to get their own copies of their own uh, backgrounds and then turn those into us. That's how our ordinance reads now. Well, to me, that's the kind of stuff that I think that's why we have staff and they should do the job and, and then come back with a recommendation you feel is fair and after you looked at how to get how to do these things right and that i don't think we're going to solve it we haven't really got there yet yeah. well those fingerprinting checks don't always come that quickly i have to work with the child care division and all of our staff have to be fingerprinted and i mean we can wait three four to six months if they've been you know out of state so so anyway this is uh i'm not seeing anybody else flagging me here yeah well uh, please i was going to say that uh, I know it is it is tedious sometimes getting fingerprints back because our former police chief was delighted to call me and say that I had failed mine and had to come back in, but it was only because of a smeared thumb but I, I also want to point out that we require the schools require this kind of thing for anyone who works with children and the marijuana business is still a pretty a pretty um, dicey business it's brand new and I don't see that there's any reason that we shouldn't be cautious so That's my opinion. so what I think we're hearing is that uh, staff are on it they're following up they're moving forward appropriately uh, and the efforts that we heard at the last meeting was to keep us informed this was another level to keep us informed uh, as the process is going. So what I'm going to do now is, because I know that there are some people that wanted to comment about this under public comment, so this is where I'm going to kind of juggle back and forth with everybody's okay. And I know that uh, uh, Mr. Patton, I think you wanted to speak to, to if, if I can also before, because I forgot, there was uh, Mr. Irvine, there was a question about uh, ongoing construction, and uh, you were going to help so. Yeah, yeah. I think so I mean, I drove by the Striker Road property there, and uh, and yeah, there. What it is is their site design review application has been approved. That's for essentially the site work, the frontage improvements, the underground utilities, uh, potentially the parking improvements. Uh, we have not received building permit applications yet, so there should not be any buildings going up. Okay, thank you. I wanted to clarify that because I know that there was some interesting information going around. Uh, Mr. Patton, did you want to? Uh, uh, to speak to this at all? If there are marijuana businesses present that want to speak, I'd like to speak after that. I don't think we have any here this evening. I know that we're going to hear them later on, but I want to make sure I get 
gave you the opportunity and I'm using some requests. I'll just say one thing. That, that's, yeah, it, it, it sounds like a real bureaucratic problem. I, I really wouldn't have an objection personally for us to, you know, to resolve it. Now. These, like, the state does, however, require all that information to get a license. Right. So it shouldn't be new to these businesses. It's just, I heard you imagine you're dealing with the federal government sometimes they say, yeah, I'm trying to get one to talk to another. Yeah, but once they get them, then they know they have to renew them on an annual right. basis and they should be able to do it. Right. I suspect it would be logical to fix it right. in an amiable way. So that's all I have. Thank you. I, I just I wanted to make sure that yeah. recognize the interest. The whole thing is for things like this try not to blow up. <coughs> in case anybody has them. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see okay. you later. Thanks for Thank you. Appreciate that. Now, what I'd like to do is, uh, what, what, we have a lot of guests this evening that would like to speak on the inclusion uh, ordinance. Now, while it's not a public hearing, I'd like to, what I'm gonna do is under public comment, let folks speak. But I think before we have folks speak, again, I'm gonna have a staff report. Um, it, it's, and this is a little out of order, but I think you can see what we're trying to do here, getting a little bit of a report, and then we'll have some public comment, and then uh, we probably will go into making, a, uh, making decisions or a discussion, and then we'll get back on our regular track. Is that okay with everybody? It's all right. So, Mr. Irvine, I think you're going to speak to the um, item 7.2, declaring independence an inclusive city. Yeah, you want me here, you want me there? Your choice. Okay, I'll, I'll just sit here if that's okay. Thank you. Um, so yeah, um, with regard to this resolution, you, you obviously got the staff report um, that was included with the packet. Um, you know, I guess I want to start by saying, you know, people frequently um, ask the mayor and I to give presentations at uh, rural development and other conferences about the revitalization that's happened here at Independence. Uh, and whenever I do one of those presentations, I always start back in 1996 uh, because that was uh, a time when the community really decided they didn't like the direction that things were going. And rather than kind of sit around and complain about it, they said, okay, we're going to try to do something about it. And they embarked on a year-long process of literally going out and talking to everybody in the community saying, hey, what do you love about independence? What do you want to see improved? What, you know, what is the, the, the sort of shining vision of independence that's in your mind? And how can we achieve that? That really, you know, charted the course. There's several plans that came out of that process that set the course that we are still navigating on today. You know, I wasn't there in 1996, but I was in 2009 when we updated that uh, that plan. We created the Vision 2020 plan. That was another one. We really did a community-wide effort, uh, surveying, stakeholder interviews. I mean, we engaged and, and included everyone that we could within the community, whether it was churches, whether it was community groups, whether it was the high school and pulled uh, the senior uh, government classes, uh, went to the air park, went to the farm worker housing development. I mean, we went to every aspect of the community because it really is important to uh, have the community of ones who are kind of charting that, that big picture course. Uh, you know, we've, more recently, we've taken the same approach with our parts plan update. Get everyone involved, all aspects of the community, find out what their needs are and how we can potentially meet those needs. You know, by doing this, we have really, I think, it's been the foundation of the success of this community. We built playgrounds, trails, a dog park, and even the library was a community project that came from you know, engaging the community, getting them involved, getting them excited, and then working with them to do these community projects. Uh, you know, I mean, council, council believed enough in this process that you know, three or four years ago, they actually set a council goal of, you know, to ensure that we are continually trying to reach out and include all sectors of the community to make sure that we are uh, essentially meeting all their needs. So, you know, there's obviously a lot of turmoil around this issue these days. There's a lot of folks running around asking communities to do this and that. And I guess the, the thing I want to say is that, you know, we're a, we're a community that cares about our residents. You know, we engage with all of our communities to identify problems uh, and to make independence a better place. You know, it's a process that has served as well for many, many years. And this, this resolution that's proposed to you all today is really just an expression of what independence has always been and might be always will be. Nothing more, nothing less. Um, so I think that's kind of the, uh, the presentation I'd like to make. I'm happy to answer questions or if you want to open up the crowd. Questions of uh, the staff related to this resolution. 
I might have some after we hear from them. Okay, and when we get into the uh, into discussion, and just a clarification, uh, Mr. Irvine, and so uh, what this resolution uh, basically does is uh, yeah, because it's obviously a, you and it's, I it's essentially an affirmation of our community philosophy. It does not set us on a particular course or keep us from a particular course. It's essentially just affirming, in my opinion, what we've already been doing for many many years and following the state law. That's it. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do now is. We're going to call this public comment, and I have a list of people who submitted paperwork who would like to speak. Now, there are a number of people who would like to speak tonight, and so what I'm going to ask is you limit your comments to three minutes. And, uh, and I always like to tell people one of the greatest speeches ever given was the Gettysburg Address, which was two minutes and 38 seconds. So you're getting extra. Um, but I think you can please make your point. Uh, and, uh, if some other folks have already said what you want to say, feel free to say, I agree with what he or she has already said. And, uh, but I want to give everybody who wants to speak the opportunity. And uh, so, uh, Shannon Cocaine, good evening and welcome to City Council. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening, Mayor Ricardo, City Councilors, and City Leaders. My name is Shannon Cocaine, and I am not from Independence, but it's been my home since 2014. Independence is a place where my husband Darren and I have felt entirely welcome and at home since the day we moved into our house on 4th Street. I want everyone who lives here or moves here to feel the same way. As such, I urge you to support the inclusivity resolution on tonight's agenda because quite simply, words matter and gestures matter. Thank you. Thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, Benjamin Gorman. So I used to calling you Mr. Gorman as a, <laughs> my son's teacher <laughs> years, years, years ago. Yeah. Good evening and welcome to council. City council members of Independence, thank you for all you do for our community and thank you for listening to us today. My name is Benjamin Gorman, I've lived in Independence for over a decade now. I teach at Central High School and I've taught some of your children. Um, I've got this statement in Spanish and in English and I'll read both if you double my time. As I see it, there are only four arguments that can be made against this statement. The first is that it's not necessary. I know that to be simply incorrect. The people who say statements like this are not necessary aren't threatened. So what they are really saying is that these statements are not necessary to them. The people who are the most threatened won't be speaking here tonight, but I assure you they exist in our community. I see them in my classroom every day. I have seen my trans students in tears because they believe the world is against them. My undocumented students sobbing because they don't know what will become of their families. My female students armed by all kinds of different, all different kinds of sexism. My Muslim, Sikh, Jewish, and Buddhist students threatened for their faith. My students of color afraid because of the racism they have read online or seen on TV or sadly have experienced right here in Oregon. We cannot tell them that everything will be all right. They are safe from all the forms of bigotry they will face in their lives, but we can tell them that we object to bigotry and that we will stand by their sides. That's important, and you have a chance to do that tonight. The second argument is that this is too political, too partisan. That argument, in my opinion, is beneath us all. Our country has been marred by the state of bigotry since before its conception. What makes our country great is we have people of courage who have been working to slowly and inexorably wipe out that stain and form a better union in spite of accusations that they were being too partisan or overly political. I ask you to be those people of courage tonight. The third argument against this resolution, and the one I think is most legitimate, is the concern that this statement may bring unwanted attention to people who already feel threatened. I think that worry comes from a very good place, a place of concern for our neighbors. If I for just one second believe that this would harm the people it seeks to protect, I would not be standing before you tonight. But this statement will not do that. The last argument against this resolution is the most heinous. I assume there are some in our community who don't want an inclusivity statement because they really don't want to live in an inclusive community. There's some group on this list that they think of as inferior, and they want that group to feel unwelcome in our city. Skip there a little bit for the sake of time. Thank you. <laughs> that is the argument you will be most directly confronting when you vote to make this statement. You will be saying that our city government is committed to welcoming and working for all our city's residents, even if some people would prefer that others are excluded from your protection and attention. I hope you will make a strong statement tonight that independence is a welcoming place for us all, and I'll be even more proud to call them an Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, Odie Campos. Good evening and welcome to Council. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to speak.
speak to you all. My name is Oli Campos, and tonight um, I am representing myself in the community as a member of the community. I was born in the Hijos de Pesca, Guayas, Puebla, with two wonderful parents, Maria and Maria. We came to the United States in search of the great American dream. To us, that was in the big house, fancy car. To us, that meant that every single one of us would get a decent education and the opportunity to pursue happiness. I'm sure you all understand the importance of the vote that you're going to be making today. The difference that makes for families like mine. Growing up, I've been called names solely based on the color of my skin. I've had family members told, you don't belong here, go back to Mexico. Having absolutely no idea where we were born or what our immigration status is, all solely based on perceived nationality. Because of Brown. I come here tonight to advocate for them and the families like mine. Thank you for letting us know and helping us feel like we belong, like we are home. I'm, I'm grateful for the city of Independence. Declaring ourselves as an inclusive city will not create a flood of new families coming to the area. It will not increase our primary. What it will do, however, is make it clear to everyone living here or just visiting that the city of Independence embraces and appreciates our differences. That we stand here together in opposing acts of intolerance committed against any one of our community members. That we welcome all. Martin Luther King Jr. once said, the ultimate tra tragedy is not the oppression and cruelty by the bad people, but the silence over that by the good people. Thank you for standing up for our community. Thank you for standing up for families like mine. I've never been proud to live in our great community as I am today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Donna Byrne. Good evening. Good evening and welcome. Thank you. Um, I've lived in Independence for about a year, and I love the diversity in this town. I love that I can go to Zumba classes at a studio where lots and lots of people speak Spanish. I, um, I think this is a great town. I don't think this ordinance or this um, resolution changes anything legally, but it is important to say this. It is important for those of us, especially who have privilege, as I do, to make it very clear that this is the kind of town that we want to live in, and I thank you for listening to me. Thank you so much for coming to see Christina Mar Marquez. Good evening. Um, as you mentioned, my name is Christina Marquez. I'm here um, on behalf of Gausa and on behalf of a lot of the families that we serve. At Gausa, we're Oregon's immigrant rights organization. We serve um, and uplift uh, immigrant families in Oregon. A lot of the families, as I mentioned, um, call this city their home and aren't able to be here because of the fear of um, you know, discrimination um, and um, immigration also. So, Gausa, um, as I mentioned, it's an uncertain time for immigrant families, um, families who have been an integral part of the city and um, Oregon's economic fabric, um, as well as our cultural fabric. Um, many have been afraid to take their children to school, going to work, visiting local government buildings like the courthouse, um, and even opening their door at home um, for fear of running into ICE or Immigration Customs Enforcement. Um, and indeed, there have been real uh, life examples of you know, children being separated from their families. Um, and while there's you know, very little that the city could do, um, it's important that for independence, well-being, and the functioning of the city, that families won't be under threat of deportation and separation um, for simply calling you know, the police or um, going to the public library or even taking on um, public transportation. So it's really vital that families hear loud and clear from the city that independence has a policy of not using local resources uh, for federal immigration strong. Uh, and we want to make sure that that happens by passing this resolution. Um, I commend you all for um, considering the resolution in, res um, in response to the increased fear in our communities. And passing an inclusivity resolution is a positive way of showing respect for all people who call this place their home. Um, thank you so much, and um, again, I hope you vote yes. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Vicki McCubbin. 
Good evening and welcome to council. Thank you. Good evening, uh, Mayor, Council members, and city officials. Um, I'm, as you can see, I'm scrambling, scrambling my nose trying to make this shorter. Um, I still feel myself uh, a relative newcomer to independence, having come here in 2014. Um, but it's obviously a very rich, diverse um, community. And um, as the lady mentioned earlier, sometimes when we are uh, privileged by nature of our own ethnic background, we make um, assumptions. I know as a teacher, I would assume that, that students understood certain things or knew certain things, and, and that's not always the case. And so, um, as the prior speakers have said, affirming what we believe that that independence is an inclusive um, city is, is worth stating and, and putting into writing. Um, and sometimes along the privilege we make um, further assumptions. Um, I've been involved in the, in the city museum and several um, um, Latino students came in, students at um, Western, and they came in and they liked what they saw in the museum, but they wanted more. They came in then with a professor, anthropology, uh, or sociology professor, and they are involved with us at the museum and the project to translate into Spanish some of the panels um, that we have in there um, explaining the Bracero's program and, and the diversity of, uh, of the Hispanic community um, here. And so I think that um, adding in any way that we can by passing this resolution to um, affirm our inclusivity is important. Thank you for your time. Thank you for coming this evening. Uh, Juan Navarro, good evening and welcome. Sorry, I always get the two things. Okay, so I'm going to try to make my as, as short as possible. Uh, well, my full name is Juan Navarro. And just a little bit about myself is that I was brought here to the United States when I was three years old, and I couldn't walk till I was 15 years old. I was brought here because of medical treatment in the United States is much better than in Mexico, and that's the American dream. At 15 years old, I was able to walk for the first time. And just a little bit more about myself is I was once in this spot before. I love this community. My office was just to, to about 20 feet downtown. Off. I love this to death. Oh, what I'm about to say always puts me at risk, you know, but I'm proud to say it to make to progress this forward. I am undocumented. I, I now have documentation, and even though this community is, is, is great, it's always in the back of my head. The boogeyman is always there, because who knows who might betray me and send me back. Um, I am I am a, a person that loves to, to help the community. I helped it so much, and I'm blessed to graduate from Western, and I'm blessed to, to be the first one in my family to attend a master's program this fall. But like I said, I am not safe, and I know I'm safe here, but it's, it's not always the same that ICE and police get miss, miss um, how do you say it? Miss, like, confused. I'll, I'll put it this way. Let's say, um, Independence prides itself on, on, on helping the Latino community. I know. I was one of the interns. Let's say ICE comes into and takes a couple people. So they're gone. The Latino community says, hey, the police department did it. That's not true. But do they know it's true? And that ruins that trust that this city has been building for a long time. So uh, one of my last things I want to say is that please take this into good consideration and vote yes on the resolution. Continue help, helping the community, continue helping the Latino population, and continue helping people like me and like many others in this wonderful community. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Jasper Smith. Good evening, sir. Hello. Welcome to council. I was pleased to see this on the agenda, and uh, I have to a very well-written, positive statement that uh, described a lot of reasons I chose to here. So I'll be very brief. Uh, basically, uh, I've come to uh, love all my neighbors and like them all to feel safe and welcome here. And towards that, I would urge the council not only to pass the resolution, but to pass it unanimously. That would be Thank you, sir. Appreciate you coming in. 
Uh, Jose Al Alzano Alveros. Good evening and welcome to the council. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, members of the council. My name is Alonso Riveros, and I actually lived here for almost all my life here in Independence. My family came here from Texas in 1961. And we may be able to make great contributions to the to the community. So I want to be able to mention that you know immigrants enhance the community here in Independence. And so with your support in in affirming the resolution, you're going to be able to send a message that other groups that are promoting hate show that Independence is a, is a great community that's going to be able to enhance the ideals and the principles that make Independence such a great city. So again, just. Being very brief, just asking to support unanimously this resolution. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Are there others in the audience who would like to speak that we haven't filled out a card or anything like that? Yes, sir. Please step up and identify yourself and welcome to the council. Thank you. City Council members and mayor, thank you for letting me speak. Um, what I'd like to say is I, I started a, uh, a thread on the Facebook page trying to get people to come to the council meetings and I listed that this was going to be one of the topics, kind of figured, you know, and I listed on there, whether you're for it or against it, you need to show up and be a part of this. And what I'd like to say is uh, I'm glad that we're an all-inclusive community. Um, I moved here from Phoenix, Arizona, and obviously there's a lot of Hispanic communities there. And most of my kids, their friends were Hispanic. And, uh, you know, we didn't know anything about Oregon. I'd never been to Oregon. And, uh, we were pleasantly surprised to see there was a, a large Hispanic uh, population here in town. Um, and, you know, we have neighbors that uh, the kids, some of the kids have moved away and still eat dinner at my house at least once a week, you know, and they're, they're, they're close to us and we care about them. Um, one of the things I'd like to bring up, though, um, from that post is uh, somebody wrote this to me. And this, this to me was kind of offensive. Um, I mentioned that I, I didn't even realize there was a problem with inclusivity in this community because I have a, <clears throat> a lot of Hispanic people that live around me. We've always gotten all, you know together well. And this is what somebody wrote to me. Um, you as a white male are part of the majority. You are speaking about how minorities are not being discriminated against, but you aren't in the position to be a victim of discrimination based on your race and ethnicity. People who are in that position are saying there's a fact, um, a problem, which is why this is brought up. I'm happy that you and your neighbors get along, but unfortunately, that does not represent the whole community. Um, my problem with that is I didn't always live in Arizona, and I didn't always live in Oregon. I grew up outside of Detroit, Michigan. And I have been discriminated against, and for this person to tell me that I don't know anything about discrimination because of my race, which this is kind of ironic that someone would discriminate against you and tell you that you don't know anything about discrimination because of your race. But I remember as a child, my, my dad worked for General Motors, and uh, we got a new stove. And he had a friend at work that needed a stove, and he was black. My dad loaded that stove into the trunk of our car, and we, as a family, took it to this guy's house. And we went through a black community, and we, we were told to get out of their, their community. We were told, what are you doing here? go back, you know, and we got, you know, called names. And what I would like to say is, I like the diversity, and, but the thing is, is don't assume that because I'm white, I've never been discriminated against. And I'm here to help whoever needs help. You know, I, I've, uh, I've helped everybody I can. I mean, I go into Winco, I bought people groceries, I don't, I don't look to see whether they're white, black, Hispanic, or whatever else. When people need help, they need help. But if we start basing everything on race and assuming that because, like myself, I'm white, I don't know, I've never been discriminated against, or, you know, I'm sorry, but I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth, and, you know, I go through everything everybody else goes through. And I would just like to say that I hope that no matter what race you are, you won't assume something about someone else just because of the color of your skin. And I would just like, I would like to see, we've enjoyed being in this community for the last 12 years. So that's all I have to say. Thank you for coming in. If you'd like to, if you'd like to speak, come forward, please. 
Good evening and welcome. Please let us know who you are. I'm Jennifer Flores. Thank you. Um, and we, I've lived here also since 2014. Must have had a big influx that year. Um, <laughs> Brie Brown. Uh, but I, I also I was raised in a kind of a, <clears throat> excuse me, a weird dynamic. Um, my father had a very good job, and my sister and I were brought up in a very Caucasian neighborhood. Super sorry to keep talking about the Greece stuff. Um, so growing up, always very brown, extremely whitewashed is what they call us. The brown folks would call us whitewashed. The white folks would call me names. Um, so I have this weird dichotomy of being on both sides. Um, I absolutely believe in inclusion. Um, I work at the high school, I work in the special ed department, and I think inclusion needs to be across the board, not just based on the color of our skin, um, on the content of our character, and it's just everywhere. It just needs to be, it just needs to happen. Um, with that said, I, I don't have a problem with the proclamation necessarily, but I feel like beyond the proclamation, our actions are far more important so while I'm certain that this proclamation will go forward, I just want to remind folks, especially when you have someone like the gentleman who just spoke, um, that it doesn't matter. Um, brown, uh, brown on the outside and white on the inside, or vice versa, or any of those things, um, we're just all people. There's one race, and it's human, and we just want to be kind to each other. That's it. Thank you very much. Last call. Okay, what I'd like to do, Council, and this is this is a shuffling back and forth. Um, since we have a group of folks here, let's just deal with this at this point. Is that okay with everybody? Okay. Uh, you've heard a staff report. You see a resolution. What are your thoughts before we get into emotions and things like that? Ken, I know you had. Uh, you might. You said you might want to make some comments, and I. It may be a question. Right? Can I ask a question of somebody at the top? Or is that you not know, supposed to do that? Well, I, I guess. Why not? <laughs> I mean, why not? Um, Mr. Gorman. Come on up. You, you, mentioned, you mentioned groups that, that are, I got, you know, like uh, racist groups here in Independence. Can you give me some examples? Well, um, I don't think of. Uh, you said groups. groups. Yeah, I think we certainly have groups in the sense of groups in Oregon. Uh, Oregon has, I, I was really shocked, I've only lived in the state for 15 years, uh, and only recently, only in the last couple of years, have I been learning about the extent of racism in our state's history, uh, which is really shocking. Um, uh, you know, and I admit I was very naive about that. Uh, so we certainly have racist groups, but Racism is far more complicated than I think people are comfortable often talking about. There are degrees, and there are people who are, uh, you know, will, will, you know, commit racist behaviors completely, you know, absolutely, you know, absolutely. And so, what is the, so what is the name of the group? So, for example, there is a group in Eugene. There is a hate group. So when I talk about it, my students who have faced racism, I don't know if we have any hate groups that I know of in Independence itself. When I talk about groups in in the sense of you know, like within you know, Facebook conversations, I see people that I would put into categories here in the past where I would say, this is, and, and perhaps not even knowledgeably, I don't think that folks recognize when they make statements about, you know, uh, all undocumented people are X or Y or whatever, I don't think they realize they're being racist in many cases. And so I'm the one who's saying that is a group of arguments that I'm seeing there. So it's a category of arguments. It's not like a organized state group under any case. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Berman. Um, what do folks think? Uh, are uh, any, any comments related to, to the uh, resolution or thoughts from the presentation? Or? I, 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 I can start. I, uh, you know, I've lived in the community for 18 years. Um, been on the council since 2010, I think. Um, and I know that the city has really tried hard to be 
inclusive and encouraging uh, all our citizens to participate in city government. I know our staff works very hard. I know the police department works very hard to be inclusive. Um, as I understand it, this re resolution doesn't change anything. We will continue to be an inclusive city as we have been. We'll continue to follow state laws and federal laws. Uh, it's just, we're just stating what we're already doing and will continue to do. Other comments or thoughts? Well, I guess the, uh, yeah, the one thing I just wanted to point out, because I mean, we've talked, we've talked a lot about race here tonight. Um, and that's, it's an issue that I, I understand that my husband is biracial. Um, but I, section one covers so much more than that under diversity. We're talking about the diversity among its residents in race, ethnicity, religion, socioeconomic status, age, sexual orientation, gender and gender identification, national origin or perceived national origin, immigration, refugee status, veteran status, disability, and dot, 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 we then go to paragraph two. So this really, it moves beyond race, it moves on to all of the characteristics that we as humans share. And those are all elements that here in independence we welcome. So I hope that most of you have taken the time to, to read the resolution. I've reposted it several times in the, uh, the thread that John talked about. Um, no one could define for me what language in the resolution they found disturbing or offensive. And so I'm excited to see all the support that has come out here tonight. So I'd like to thank you for showing up and, and sharing your thoughts and doing some very great things here this evening. Well, there are other councilors wishing to say anything? Yes. Uh, Mr. Hicks? Yeah, I just wanted to thank everyone for taking the time to come out. Uh, I found it kind of heartwarming to see everybody come together um, and show support for this resolution and I do think it was especially important to remember that especially from the last few presenta presentations that even if this resolution is passed uh, we do have like a constant struggle to up uphold it so um, thank you all. Councilor Martin, if you will let me speak. Yes. I, I agree with both uh, Councillor Tatus and Councillor Hicks that this describes things we already do. The resolution puts kind of a bow on it and makes it makes it visible and makes a statement. We are part of a group here. We are part of the group of the people who live in independence. And uh, I've heard it said several times that there's a different style, a different thought, a different uh, camaraderie here, and I would have to agree with that. We, um, when I got on council, which has been 16 years ago, 15 years ago, my two things that I really wanted to work for were, were now the word is inclusivity, but it was getting everybody involved, and it was getting a hotel, and it looks like we're gonna do both. <laughs> Well, I guess it's to me, I, uh, I'm really happy to be able to speak about this because one, I'm very proud that we are a community of action. We don't just talk about it, we've been doing it every single day, as you heard in the staff presentation. This has been part of our council goals uh, officially for four years. And before then, it's, it's been how we've operated for the police department through all parts of the city. Uh, as many of you know, I'm a naturalized American citizen. Um, I came from somewhere else. Mom and dad, dad was in the military, they didn't have kids. Uh, they were issued children in Germany. They got me there. And uh, so and I remember becoming an American citizen and I remember what it was like because I, got, I too got teased as some folks talked about because I was the German, I was the crowd, that was from somewhere else. Um, I'm really proud of, you know, uh, I've had a pleasure through my Olympic experiences representing this country both athletically and, and administratively to be around the world and know how important inclusivity is because a lot of the troubles that are going on in the world are people aren't getting along with each other. I'm really proud that we get along here. Uh, you know, in order to form a more perfect union, 
we're working at it every single day. So I'm really proud to uh, speak in favor of this resolution. I don't get to vote on it, because I don't think there's going to be a tie. And, um, but I just, I'm really proud of uh, what we're doing in this community, and uh, I think that's enough of a speech. Uh, is there anything else that we need to talk about or would somebody like to uh, suggest action? I have one thing. Yes, sir. If you go to the, I call it Independence Days, it was called? Western Days. Western, Western Days. And you see the, the community together. And you, you'd have to go out of your way to try to find something that's different other than maybe this color of our skin. Other than that, people are next to people and they're doing well. One place where I think we could do, do better, you're not going to believe this, but is in city government. We have a lot of open air, a lot of open positions periodically on committees. And we need to get people, all kinds of people, uh, in on these positions. And it's just not happening. So think about that. I, I encourage you. Great. Is this an action item? Yes, sir. Please do. Sure. <laughs> I move approval of resolution number 17-1460, declaring the city of independence as an inclusive city. And I second that and invite your unofficial consensus. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, that's kind of you. Uh, I have a motion, I have a second. Is there further discussion? Hearing no further discussion, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed. Aye. Not an aye there, but I'm in favor too. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to follow up and I got all messed up. Could the motion I, passes. Could I ask Odin Kafos if he has his uh, talk written down? I do. Can you turn that into the um, city recorder? I think that was eloquent and should be part of the minutes. Thank you. I'm glad to say that. Uh, and I want to thank people for taking the time on a hot Tuesday night to come in and speak with us. I really appreciate it. So, um, counselors, if you don't mind, can we take a five-minute break, please? Any objection to that? Okay, uh, and then we'll get back to the, the regular everyday, the regular everyday business, and we'll go from there. Okay? So we're in recess for about five minutes. Okay, we're back in session here, folks. Um, we're going to go back up, council members. We're going to go to uh, visitor and public comment, and then we're going to just move forward from there, if that's okay with everybody. Okay, the next people we have, uh, uh, Matt, Matthew, excuse me, Matthew Lynn? Yes. Yes, sir. I'm just pulling up something on the computer. It's... You want us to come back around to you in a few minutes? I can do that. Are there other people that have public comment to make at this point? Without objection, what I'm going to do is we'll go on to council liaison reports, and uh, then uh, we'll uh, we'll come back to uh, to to, Ms. Hewlett, uh, to Mr. Lynn uh, under mayor report. Just to let folks know. Oh, excuse me. So then then we'll just stay in the regular order. Mr. Lynn, you're up. Sorry about that. Mayor, esteemed council members, uh, you know who I am. Um, and I, I'm sure that this is more difficult for me than it is for you, but I know that uh, I, I truly appreciate the forum and the opportunity to speak. And tonight has been very interesting. So, Dear City Council, I, I want to present an updated offer for your consideration. Uh, what I'd like to propose is a $50,000 payment on or before September 20th of this year. And then the promissory note in terms that we have currently would have a two-year extension. This added time will help increase the equity and make the real estate easier to refinance through conventional bank financing sources. Other issues to consider that I wanted to just kind of run through. How does it make sense that the city would take a property back and that I would lose all of the equity 
and money invested over this roughly 10 year period of time and effort. I mean, Mr. Klein's proposed outcome of me losing this property is not in the spirit of the original agreement, which was to take a derelict gas station property from boarded up windows and environmental contamination to a viable restaurant business, and that's what we have. During the intervening eight years, it is undeniable that our community and country suffered through a recession that is widely recognized as one of the worst in our history. And during the past several years, it is not uncommon that the real estate mortgages and bank notes have had to be renegotiated in response to this difficult financial time. Mr. Klein has characterized this as a subsidy for our business. He has also highlighted how the city has not offered this type of agreement to other area businesses. The fact is, the city came up into possession of this property from the estate of the prior owner, and our agreement is in fact unique because the city doesn't own multiple gas station properties with unsolved environmental issues. We can't compare this to other local properties because it is in fact a unique property which required extensive time and effort to resolve the environmental issues on site. The city has earned and continues to earn interest on this loan and is being offered a significant principal reduction for an extension. As far as economic renewal and investment goes, this has been a successful investment for the city. City manager on several occasions acknowledges that he does not like me and therefore is doing everything in his power to persuade you and the council not to extend this note. Are there not other local businesses that have relied on city assistance and continued modifications to existing agreements and contracts? I can think of several, and it's a recurring theme. Have other local and or current developers come to the city to ask for change orders or construction increased budgets for various additions to the scope of work that they're performing. I've been in this council and heard numerous requests. What political motivations are behind this? I have serious concerns that there are competing interests here and perhaps other developers who have relationships with Mr. Klein that are moving the path of this discussion away from extending the current agreement at the detriment of myself. As a man who has invested considerably in this community and this town center, and by all accounts has delivered several positive retail and restaurant locations in town, I am asking you to accept my cash offer and extend this note so that I can seek conventional financing when the equity is in more favorable ratio. Do you have any questions for me? Thank you for your presentation. <clears throat> I have the next speaker is Martha Lynn. Good evening and welcome to council. Thank you. It's my privilege to be able to address you this evening. I am Matthew's mother and I have observed through the last nine plus years just how hard my son has worked on this enterprise of Mechanico which now has a uh, barbecue restaurant in the, the building. He has uh, not only put money, but he has put hours and hours of sweat equity into this business. I um, was trying to think of some things to um, comment on here, and a couple things came to mind. One of them is, you know, the hotel that you're preparing for and some of the wonderful things that you have planned and put into action and that the independence residents are um, being able to benefit from. And not only the independence residents, but people from outlying areas, because certainly when the hotel is in place, there's going to be um, a big boost, I think, in the tourism here. Because we live in a beautiful place and um, outside of conventions, I would bet that the summer months will be uh, quite used in the hotel facility. How can you resist being on the water? 
and being in a place where you can have the intimacy of riding a bike through areas where hops are growing, blueberries are growing, vineyards are planted, wineries are popping up. I mean, it's, it's a wonderful thing, and it's going to attract a lot of people, I'm sure. And a hotel, I don't know whether it's planning on having a restaurant inside, but it's certainly something like that that brings so many tourists to a community, um, not even tourists, business people coming for conventions. They also are looking for some diversity when they come to a location. And uh, so a hotel and the tourism industry itself, it needs supporting players. And when I think of the mechanical, I think of it as something that plays that role. It is maybe when you look at the building, which is a refurbished one pump gas station, you don't think that it is so pretty. But to people that have lived their lives in independence can remember when that was a functioning gas station. It has a little bit of nostalgia to it. And Mechanico is very unique. It has capitalized on a trend that is very popular in Portland and is becoming popular across multiple states. I was just on South Commercial and Mildred yesterday and I saw the Beehive. The Beehive, it's a food court with little um, carts. And it's very much the concept of Mechanico. It is a gravel lot that is being utilized by a number of businesses. And so the affordability is there. They're not having to build, dig foundations or anything else. It's very um, kind of environmentally friendly in that regard. And I think that Mechanico represents um, that kind of a, a trend, the recycle, reuse, repurpose um, idea that is so popular among the college and young adults. And for that reason, it attracts a lot of people. I have uh, been at Mechanico. People haven't known who I was. I was just sitting at the bar and They've had wonderful things to say about how cool it is and how popular it would be if it was in Portland. I think it really adds to the diversity that can be provided to people that come to stay in the hotel and to enjoy the city of independence. It's very unique. Thank you. Well, I'm not quite finished. Okay, you can help wrap it up. So anyway, I, I just want to reiterate that it's a very new concept. It's low, low impact because he hasn't dug into the ground to construct anything, but he has repurposed an existing building that it has sentimental, uh, nostalgic um, effects for a lot of people. And um, it provides the unique venue it's loved by locals and out-of-towners alike. It adds to the amenities of the city um, and what the city can offer to its local as well as guests. And it is currently a destination, uh, pub and restaurant all on its own. My son is the current owner of Mechanico. He's put considerable money and sweat equity into the derelict building making a viable business. He has been a patient and hopeful supporter of independence. He was the regional coordinator for Start Making a Reader Today. He has been, uh, participated um, with the Business Incubator of Independence, was on that council. He has restored and found occupants for properties in the city including where the oven bird currently sits and the Independence Grill. And now he's requesting that the city extend the financing on this viable business. And 
Why does the city have economic development or business incubators? Do cities not frequently make concessions with businesses and potential businesses? Tax breaks, floating bonds. I hope, considering Matthew's current offer, the relatively small balance due on the note or on the loan, the viability of Mechanico as a business and popular attraction for in and out of towners and also the loss this would inflict financially to Matthew after nine years of operating this business. I hope that you will accept his offer. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Are there other public comments to be made tonight? I'd like to say something. Okay. okay. Please identify yourself so Karen has uh, that information. I'm John Robbins. Um, you know, I just like to say, you know, I'm not even a, a customer of Mechanic. I, I, I went there when they first opened, I think, once, and um, I don't really drink or anything, but, you know, I, I've noticed that business has picked up quite a bit there, and, you know, I, I don't mean to badmouth anything, but if, if he can come with $50,000, 50, with $50, that's more than mine that's ever done, you know, and if we can help a small business owner out, I'm all for that. I mean, look at all the money we put into mine and stuff. I mean, give the guy a break, you know? And, and I've seen a lot of people come into town to his business, and if they're, if they're coming in here, you know, they're gonna be going over to Jimmy's for gas and go to other places here in town too. So, you know, I, I just, I really hate to see it close down. Thank you for your opinion this evening. Okay, I don't see anybody else rushing the microphone. I have no more uh, uh, little slips of paper, so we're gonna keep moving forward under reports and presentations. Just a couple of things for you folks, for me. Uh, I'm going to be attending the mayor's conference, uh, summer conference, and I want to let uh, folks uh, know that Sean Irvine is also presenting as a primary presenter there, and uh, really appreciate him uh, taking his time to uh, uh, to present to 70 to 80 mayors from around the state. And he's presented before, and he's also been a uh, uh, well received. Uh, also, just uh, <clears throat> letting you know that uh, in the Oregon transportation plan that was recently passed by the legislature, uh, there were some additional dollars uh, that are gonna come through for transportation both in the city and the county. And uh, there's some guesses on what that might be, uh, but you're never sure. And yeah, until, but you know, it's a positive step forward uh, for local governments also. So that's what I have to report. Uh, Councilor Takas, would you like to have anything to say about uh, traffic safety commission, sir? Yeah, I was uh, unfortunately unable to make the last uh, traffic safety commission, but I'm going to lean on uh, Mr. Irvine over there to talk about some grants that were discussed at that meeting. Yeah, so the uh, traffic safety committee uh, pretty regularly gets requests from the community for various, uh, you know, installation of various traffic safety devices. Uh, and in this budget, uh, we actually did, uh, did approve uh, a small amount of money to, to fund a sort of pilot small grant program for neighborhoods to uh, essentially propose you know, traffic calming um, measures. Um, so we're actually in the process of developing the guidelines, looking for a little bit of feedback about what you know, we should and should not be funding. Um, one thing we do know we're, this is uh, you know, this will not be resulting in stop signs and speed bumps in every, uh, every block intersection. <laughs> this is more for uh, you know, kind of other other type of uh, economy measures, and, and uh, that's pretty much the gist of it for now. Like I say, we're kind of looking for input on what's uh, you know where, where we should be directing people in terms of the types of things we want to fund. Great. You want to take uh, it? Yeah. Historic right. Preservation Commission. Um, I hate to say this, but we are slowly still inching away to uh, getting closer to changing the historic preservation code. Uh, I think we jumped through some legal hurdles and we'll be reviewing it again and inch a little closer to it. So that's still in the works. Uh, we're also reviewing uh, some plans uh, for uh, uh, renovation of the, what was once going to be called the uh, Area 51 building group. I don't remember the name of it now. Boom, boom, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and then I'm also going to talk to the grant man, have the grant man talk about some other grants through the Historic Preservation Commission. So uh, similar to the Traffic Safety Commission, um, we actually were able to get uh, some grant money from the state 
uh, certified local government program, which will be passing through as, uh, in part as a residential uh, property improvement program for properties that are contributing historic resources. Uh, so folks will be eligible for up to $1,000 um, towards repair of exter uh, exterior repair or improvements to historic contributing properties. They have to match it dollar for dollar. Um, the city also was able to put a little bit of money in the budget for a companion program for historic non-contributing properties. These are properties that have been altered to an extent that they no longer essentially add value to the historic character of the neighborhood. Uh, and the purpose there would be for folks to make improve exterior improvements to the homes that uh, essentially bring them closer into the, uh, the original historic style and, and, uh, and look and feel for the neighborhood. Great. Um, Councillor Hicks, would you want to talk a little bit about uh, some busy activities? Sure. Uh, well, given the time that the Western days, most of our work uh, the last few meetings were up getting planning the event. So with that over, um, I'd like to say that seems to be a general consensus that it was an extremely successful event, so I think the commission members and volunteers deserve a huge credit for what they did, all the hard work they did. Um, looking forward to this next, this next year, they're um, going to put an emphasis on getting volunteers' knowledge about the event more uh, earlier, so we can hopefully, you know, we're, we're, kind of, we're, kind of, we're kind of at our limit, yeah. So um, I just want to kind of announce that Janice has set up a meeting here at the Civic Center on August 3rd at 7 for those that are interested in volunteering for Western Days next year. Uh, and meeting Western Days or Independence Day? And with that said, I, I believe next year is, is also going to be the change where it changes to Independence Days. Yay! Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, moving forward, uh, Mr. Irvine, uh, we did not put in a staff report in here. Could we just insert that? Because I know you had a couple minor items that you wanted to report under the staff report. Yeah, yeah. so um, I think the big one is, uh, you may have seen there was a story in the, the Statesman Journal a couple days ago. We did a little, uh, a little bit of a, a press conference in the uh, Amphitheater Plaza. Um, so the, the state uh, awarded us a uh, million dollars uh, from the capital uh, farm bill to essentially continue our riverfront uh, park developments. Um, this is going to pair nicely with, we, we actually received a $414,000 grant from State Parks and Recreation, their local government grant program. That was going to be improving the park space of Independence Landing, that lower terrace down there, running the trail through there, as well as kind of a staircase uh, ramp system that would connect two plazas, one on the top, one on the, one on the lower terrace. Um, what this money's going to enable us to do is essentially finish the Independence Landing Park, put kind of a covered pavilion on the lower plaza, uh, a deck overlook of the river, uh, and then what we really want to do is focus on developing uh, high quality pathways access down at the end of C Street there, uh, and kind of roll that into the Riverview Park, um, kind of redesign uh, that whole parking area down there, which used to be for boat trailers, is unnecessary now. Um, so we want to kind of take another look at that, see if we can, if you, if you look at it, it's graded in such a way that it, it slopes up towards the river. So if you're sitting in the amphitheater, you actually can't see the river. So what we want to do is um, see if we can rework the, the, the grading there, the topography a little bit to enhance river views, enhance river access, both for, for boats and for people who want to get down to the river. Uh, and then what we're hoping to do is uh, leverage this money even more with additional grants. Because once you get that initial seed money, it's much easier to go to other funders and say, hey, we've already got a million dollars, can you give us another half million or another million? Uh, so we're hoping to just kind of carry, continue to carry this on. Questions? When you said boats, you meant kayaks? Yes, yes, non-motorized boats. I okay. met with uh, the Eugene Club, the uh, Kayak <coughs> Canoe Club, and they've given us feedback on what they think kayakers and canoers think is would, would facilitate them stopping here or staying overnight in the hotel or stopping and going to the business place and they were very interested and uh, we passed that on and, and uh, we'll be working on it great council Mark. yes uh, mr irvine the um, million dollars that was received that is for work on the property after the current work that we're doing for infrastructure is done yeah, so I mean, this is going to be, we, we don't actually have the improvements designed yet, so that's the first step is we're going to be 
completing the, the design and engineering for the improvements and then we would hopefully this winter it, it'll depend a little bit because if we're talking about in water work uh, there's extra permitting that goes on and extra time that that takes so this would either be happening next summer or potentially the, the following spring depending on permitting and, and likely at the same time that the uh, main development is going on the main, main development what do you mean I mean the building of the of the yes. hotel and yeah ideally yeah so hopefully you know, that, that we expect the, the the private development to be happening on events landing and and that's the nice part is this would all be happening off of that terrace so they, they really would not conflict okay thank you great mayor can i give a quick update on my end just because i've got the information sure why not let's pick that up it, it won't take but a couple minutes um one of the key one of the key figures that you look at in the financial statement for a company like mine is their operating income uh, you, June of 16, operating income from my was about, it's kind of like profit, only before these huge bond payments have to be made. So here's how good the company's doing, and before, years before, they incurred all this, this debt was incurred, and so they have to pay for it, but you got to have a company that's making a profit before you can start paying back debt. So last June, the operating income was 110000 This last, and they've been making improvements in last March, so was 124,000 in April, 136,000 May, 144,000, and June was 150,000. So they continue to increase um, to be able to fill more and more of the bonds. Uh, they're starting to do the upgrade to the system now, uh, and that will be on a. They, they've done a good uh, time management program on it, and so we can track it on a monthly basis. One other thing, the total in 2006-2017 uh, operating income was about uh, <clears throat> 1.53 million. I'm sorry, that's that's in uh, yeah 16 and 17. The previous year was 1.23 million, so they're up about 300 thousand dollars year over year as far as operating income go. I think we'll see them smooth out around $150,000 operating income uh, per month. So you can figure it out from there. We need about 190,000 to be able to make 100% of the bond payments. Great, nice nice report, good to hear. Okay, we're gonna keep moving. Uh, we have uh, several electro, uh, sorry, I don't need to give you a report, Mr. Uh, Irvine. You have several things in, in series here that are related. I will do this one for the podium since so this is the, the official measures. So, uh, first up, uh, we've got a, a few different um, uh, temporary liquor license approvals uh, requested. Uh, two of them are related to the eclipse. Um, the first one uh, would be for a, a beer festival on the Saturday of the eclipse, that was the 19th. Um, <clears throat> this, when we first began uh, looking to it a, a kind of a festival weekend for, uh, for the eclipse. Um, Alex you know, uh, approaches with the idea of, you know, hey, what if we do a beer festival uh, in the park? That would be great way to draw, draw additional people to the area. Uh, actually, our first um, our first thought was we actually approached Ida to see if they wanted to partner on this as a uh, essentially a fundraiser for the organization. Um, they felt like it was a little too much work for them at that time, so the city decided to proceed uh, accordingly. Um, so that's what you have in front of you is the, the proposed temporary liquor license for the, the beer festival. It would be set up, as I said, the staff report, um, similar to the uh, Brewer's Edge series. Uh, with the difference of um, the beer garden would be essentially a large tent uh, on C Street. C Street is going to be closed for um, uh, basically for the, for the long weekend. Um, so this would be a big tent there. Uh, if you're familiar with beer festivals, it's a fairly typical when you purchase the glass and get a couple tokens with it when you walk in. You can purchase, purchase additional tokens uh, as you like. If each token is worth a four ounce pour. Um, so I think that's all the, the, the report. I think that you can give on that. If you have questions, I'm happy to answer them. And we also have uh, Alex uh, and Cordier, our coordinator here. Questions for uh, Mr. Irvine? Will there be vendors like Mechanicos at these at this occasion to uh, selling food? There is going to be a food truck. Uh, we're calling it a food truck festival uh, down uh, farther into the park. But yes, there will be food served. Just one comment, lest you think that Ida is not doing anything for this. And I speak as chairman of the organization right now. 
Ida is doing uh, three back-to-back -back ghost walks and we're now we've got a couple of other volunteers and we're going to be able to accommodate up to 300 people and uh, we're also um, going to have a presence there for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I should have said, I'd have felt that they were fully committed. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Words matter, no. <laughs> Additional questions for staff. This is an action item. Somebody? Yes. I move to approve Rookie Sports Bar and Eatery to operate a temporary alcohol concession at the Independence Ghost Dark event in Riverview Park on the date requested in the area designated and per the plan to manage contained in the OLCC application. Second. I have a motion second for the discussion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. Thank you very much. Okay, so the next one uh, is substantially similar. Uh, in this case, we're strictly talking about your garden. Uh, this would be essentially identical to what um, you would see typically in the summer series. Uh, I would note um, that in this case, you know, we are trying to engage the downtown businesses more with our, our summer events in the amphitheater. We did actually approach all the downtown businesses about if they were interested in, um, in running this beer garden. Uh, they all felt like they were fully committed to the, uh, <laughs> to the eclipse. And so, uh, and so in this case, uh, again, Mr. Trevino, uh, you know, he's already familiar with it. He's already got the setup working out. So that seemed like the most logical uh, fallback position. So, so you went out and asked other people if they wanted to be down there and do beer concessions. Twice. And they turned it down. Yes. Well, they're running businesses at the same time. Yes. Right. Sure. I understand. Yeah. And, again, and I do want to say cool. that I did notice excuse me for talking on, but I did notice tonight that there is one business that's already prepared for the eclipse. Uh, Brew is selling t-shirts that says, I blacked out at the brew. Okay. I don't think there are any more questions. <laughs> uh, someone here to make the motion. Certainly will. I move to allow Ricky uh, Sports Bar and Eatery to operate a temporary alcohol concession at the Independence Coast Dark event in Riverview Park on the date requested in the area designated and for the plan to manage contained in the OLCC application. Second. Motion second. Discussion. Are we okay? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Both motion carries. Thank you. Your third one, sir. Um, Page three. <laughs> Sorry. I forgot about this one. Um, so uh, for the eclipse, um, obviously we, we want to have a certain amount of uh, proper and, and uh, appropriate regulations and restrictions on what folks can and can't do within the park. We want to have people being fun and uh, you know, large groups get together. There's certain items and things and critters that uh, uh, can typically cause problems. So what you have in front of you is a requested uh, list of rules that we would like approved uh, for the eclipse festivities. Are there questions for uh, 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 staff on this? It is contained in the a couple minor questions. Please do. Uh, so uh, you said no animals. Uh, so the campers are already aware of the one yes. that's And that's probably something that's going to be very widely advertised that no animals will be allowed. Yeah, we are definitely trying to make it very clear. And, and when, you, when you reserved a, a campground, you actually had to, you had the rules. You know, we've had to look through before you know, do the old click. I, I agree. Uh, you know, there's, we're definitely trying to make sure that folks are aware of these restrictions. There's, okay. al there's also, oh, sorry, one more thing. Uh, there's also under, uh, let's see, uh, terms and conditions um, number five, uh, pro prohibited items. It says glass. I was wondering if that should maybe read glass containers because I'm, I'm thinking there's probably a few glass things that we would allow in the park. It's a person good for glasses or, you know, yeah. things like that. I don't know wording bothers people, I just, I just noticed that. Yeah, I think, I don't know, Chief, is that a, I mean, is glass containers a typical, more typical wording or? That's your camping rules, right? I think that the Indigo Dark Committee came up with those camping rules. So okay. That's not yeah, so you were probably glass containers. I mean, that was the intent, was glass containers, right? So is it a problem to add the word container at this point? I don't believe so. Is that okay? Any objection to that? Okay, we'll just consider that as an add for when we get to it. I just, I have a, a question that was relative to the rest of the community. 
community beyond the people who are signing up to camp. I know that it is very popular at Western Days, come Independence Days, to bring your dog down to the park. And I would hope that there'll be lots of notification ahead of time and maybe a sign posted so you don't have people you have to turn away. Yeah, I mean, we are, you know, we're, we're trying to do everything we can to, to reach out to the community, especially these next, these coming weeks, sort of saying, hey, this is happening, you know, be, not only be prepared, but also here's, here's what's going on in the community, and here's how to have a good time. Unless you fall that position. I, do, I drive down from Billingham, Washington to see it, and I've got a little Bowser, and then you tell me I can't have it. So you're, I have to leave, and, or can I just, I've got a leash, can I just put her on a leash? I mean, I don't know what the fallback position is, because is it just like, that's it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, pretty much. And that only applies in the park. Correct. Yeah. So they could they're be on the street, they could be, you know. Yeah, but I think what you're talking about is camping, if, you know, if you're driving a campground or, or, or the event. But yeah, that is, it's, you know, we are going to attempt to post it as clearly as possible, as many times as possible. And, and if you still somehow miss it, I'm sorry. There could be a business opportunity yeah. here. Not to yeah. be <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> What about bikes? That, that seems a little strange. I, I want to know the logic on that one because I go to a, a public campground, I see a lot of people riding bikes. Courtney, do you want to speak to that? Yeah. I'm right here. Okay. I know speak loud. loud. really tried to protect uh, independence 
um, not always in the most smooth going way, but he, I, I always feel that he's, he's really working hard and looking out for the best for the city of Independence. Uh, and, and as I say, looking at the compensation of other city managers, I just think maybe we should be looking at raising his compensation a bit. Do you have any uh, uh, any any uh, <laughs> frame there? <laughs> Numbers you're talking about? Um, that I'm really not sure. I would probably I would I'll just throw out 1.5 percent. Okay. Other people's thoughts. Anybody? Well, I, yeah, yeah I, I was formulating. Okay. Um, because I do, I, I agree with, with much of what Thomas said, is that in, in the long run, um, I mean, David has, he's, he's really had the best interest of independence at heart. Um, I think that he's, he's done a good job, you know, in most cases of, of providing um, substantial leadership to our city staff and providing them the, the direction they need and in return has received from them the support that he needs. So I would also like to see an increase and in not having a calculator that is really difficult for me right now. You have a calculator. Oh, that's, oh, that's true. Um, and and I'm, so I would be supportive of something in the way of increase. Uh, Tom, you know, also talked about uh, sort of market value. I, I guess is what we're looking at in comparison to other, you know, other cities um, of comparable sizes and the compensation packages that that they're providing. We come in under that. So yes, I would I would be supportive of at least what Tom's proposing. Sorry, Councilor Daniels. Other thoughts. Yeah, I think David has worked really hard, and um, and of course, you know, that, that there's some you know, some areas that, that he needs to kind of. Um, but um, I I feel that, that he and I am in favor of a an increase on on his salary. Other comments? Please? Yes. I do not favor an increase at this time. I believe that um, we cannot measure or should not measure by what other cities are giving to their city managers or what even what market value is because we have a unique budget, we have a unique situation. Uh, I would like to be more apprised of what his uh, future plans are. That would probably help me make a decision um, in the future. And at this time, I think the compensation should remain where it is. Okay. Sir? Pretty much agree with what Marilyn said. I think that it's a fair compensation. Certainly you shouldn't compensate people based on what other cities are doing. You should do it based upon what the value is perceived in that individual, and I don't think it should be any higher than it is right now. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm of the mind to, uh, that uh, an adjustment is, is warranted, and um, I, don't, I think I might need to be seeking something higher than a percent and a half. Um, I, I think one of the best indications of what's deserving is neighboring cities and you know you know areas that are like um, I would like to maybe see some sort of adding in some sort of deferred comp something that's actually very quite standard in the other areas around okay people I, uh, I think that there is a uh, merit in providing additional compensation so I'll, I'll weigh in there uh, so we've, we've kind of put out our opinions. Does someone want to suggest specific action? I move to um, increase uh, our city manager client's compensation uh, by 1.5%. I need to know a number. I can't work with 1.5%. What would that be? I think that comes to 
Uh, I think that comes to 1900 a year. Yeah. I think that's. I don't know what he's making. Yeah, I, from my yeah, that that's what I believe. We can make we could make the numbers. Up. <coughs> I just didn't know. I didn't know what 1.5 was. Yeah. I, that, that's what I believe it is. Sounds Yeah. It was, yeah. You want to do a number instead of a percentage? Uh, uh, <laughs> <Okay. laughs> so 1.5 is the biggest thing okay. I can think right now. So was that? Did you make a motion? Yes. Okay. You have a motion. Is there a second? Oh, sorry, second. There is a second. To it. Now we have discussion. Does anybody have anything else they'd like to put in? I don't hear anybody else saying anything at this point. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 I have, and opposed? No. no. And I have 42 yes and two no's. Karen, did you get those? The no was Day and Morton. Okay. And the ayes were the other four. Okay. That's done. And, um, is there anything else that we need to do this evening other than go home and eat dinner? If not, someone could send us home, please. All in favor say aye. Aye. And opposed. Motion carries. Thank you very much.